In this video, I will be doing a tutorial on Kit 1, which consists of a PCB, a microcontroller, two LEDs, a battery compartment, two resistors, and of course, solder wire. In this video, we will be soldering, but you can also use glue to complete the kit. And although unnecessary, you may use this tool called a third hand to help you. We will be using tape for most of this video instead of the third hand. The most important part of the PCB is the area that is labeled ATT85. This area, as you can see, consists of a square area with 8 pin holes. All of them are circles except for one. The square pin is marked with a P1. We will be aligning one of the pins on the microcontroller with this pin. On the top of the microcontroller, you will see an indented circle. This is above the pin that we will be aligning with the square pin hole that is labeled P1 on the PCB board. It should look like this. Once the microcontroller is in place, we can proceed to solder. The best way to do this is to flip the PCB board upside down and tape it down to the table with the microcontroller inside the PCB board. This will help to stabilize the microcontroller on the table. We will be wearing safety glasses to protect our eyes while soldering. Next, we are going to use the soldering gun or glue depending on what you chose to use to mount the microcontroller onto the PCB board. If you would like to learn how to solder you can find some tutorials on how to do so online. The key idea to soldering is to put the gun down, wait a couple of seconds, then put the solder wire in place, wait until it melts and remove the wire then the gun. We will do this again for the other pins until all pins are done. Place gun down, wait a couple of seconds, then put the solder wire in place, wait until it melts, and remove the wire, then the gun. The other pins are just as easy to complete. Just follow the same process for the pins, being careful not to accidentally form a bridge between two pins. Soldering two pins together will cause the microcontroller not to work. Remember the process. Put the gun down, wait a couple of seconds, then put the solder wire in place, wait until it melts, and remove the wire, then the gun. This is now the completed mounting of the microcontroller onto the PCB board. Now it's time to mount the resistors. We will have to cut the resistor ends off. Leave about one inch of the wire on each side of the resistor when cutting it. To place the resistor in the PCB, we are going to take the legs of the resistor and bend them about 90 degrees, as you can see. Do this for both resistors. We will place the resistors in the area on the PCB board marked R1 and R2. Don't worry about the direction of the resistor. It will work no matter which of the two directions you use for mounting it. Once the resistors are in place, we will proceed to mount the resistors onto the PCB board. But first, we will make sure that they are secure. You can do this by bending the legs slightly outwards. I will now place the gun at the base of each resistor leg and we'll proceed to solder the transistor down to the PCB board. Now 
As you can see, the resistors are now completely soldered down to the PCB board. Examine them to make sure that they are secure. We will now cut the resistor legs off to eliminate the unnecessary excess wire. You can do this using simple wire cutters. The next step is to add the LEDs. It is very important that we use the correct orientation of the LED. If not properly oriented on the PCB board, the LEDs will not work. To find the correct orientation is quite simple. As you can see, the LED has two legs with different lengths. The long leg is positive and the short leg is negative. You can also see that the PCB board has a circle and a square around the pinhole where the LED is to be placed. The square will be used for the long leg, which is positive, and the circle will be used for the short leg, which is negative. You will also notice that the PCB has a drawing of the LED's outline around the pinholes. Notice that there is a rounded side and a flat side on the LED bottom. This should also match the drawing around the LED pinholes. In Kit 1, you have two options for adding LEDs. One can be directly mounted on the LED, and the other can be placed on an extension wire, which allows the LED to be further away from the PCB board. As you can see, we have one LED that is mounted to extension wires that then go into the place that the LED pins would have been on the PCB board. The red wire goes on the long or positive pin, and the black wire goes onto the short or negative pin. Most of the time, the positive wire is red, but the negative wire can vary in color, including colors such as white or green. To complete the kit, we will install the battery compartment to the PCB. The battery compartment has one black and one red wire. Remember, red is positive and black is negative. If you look at the PCB, the area for the battery will be marked BATT and will have a plus next to one pin and a minus behind the words GND for ground next to another pin. The red wire will be going into the plus or positive pinhole. The black wire will be going into the minus or negative pinhole. The battery pack wire is a little bit thicker than the pinhole and will make it difficult to place the wire inside the pinhole. The fix for this is rather simple. You basically want to more or less calculate a small amount of wire that you will need to remove in order for the wire to fit inside the pinhole. This wire can be removed using standard wire cutters. Then you want to wind the wire around in order to create a tip that will easily slide into the pinhole. To finish off, just place the battery wires into the correct places on the PCB board. The red in the positive and the black in the negative. You will notice the setup on our PCB board has one LED that is currently on the PCB board and one LED that is using the extension wires so that it can be away from the PCB board. You will also notice that there is another pinhole to the right of the battery pinholes labeled EXT. This is a pinhole that may be used for future extensions to the kit and will not be used at the moment. This will conclude the Kit 1 tutorial. You should be able to power on the kit and see it in action. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you soon.